Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today I thought we would do an introduction to cryptic crosswords. Some of our content, particularly on Patreon, is about um, cryptic crosswords. And we tend to look at some of the harder ones there because uh, partly because people like watching me struggle with them and partly because they often yield the most interesting uh, things for people who are familiar with crosswords. But quite a lot of comments are from people who are not familiar with crosswords, who are interested and who are wondering if we do a sort of guide to how to solve cryptic crosswords from the beginning. And we used to. We used to. I mean, when the channel's name tells you that that's how we started, uh, we were looking at cryptic crosswords. Uh, we have put up a number of videos that look at some of the basics, um, but we haven't done it for a long time. And I thought it would be worth trying to just explain because a lot of people say I'd, I'd like to get into cryptic crosswords but I don't understand the rules and the conventions and the vocabulary and how they work and why the answers give what they do. So I thought we would go through one of the Times' quick cryptics. These are puzzles they put out to be easier basically, to, to be fairly simple introductions to cryptics. And I'm told that number 2000, which came out recently, has some special features. So I'm expecting either something hidden in it or a theme to develop, and that might make it more interesting too. But I'm also going to go through what, how cryptic clues work so that there is a guide out there and we can always point people to this video to explain what is going on in a cryptic clue. So before I open the puzzle, let us start with the absolute basics. Now, people ask, what are the rules? I believe there's one rule that you need to know. That's all you need to know to start trying to solve cryptic clues. And that is this rule. Each clue has a definition and some wordplay to confirm the answer. So what do I mean by definition? I mean a synonym or something that otherwise defines the clue. It could be a definition by an example. So if you said the sun, for instance, the answer could be star because the sun is one of the is, is a star effectively. Um, but it could also be just a definition. So if you saw the word weary in a clue, that could mean tired. Now, that definition will typically be at one end of the clue, and the rest of the clue will be some wordplay to confirm the answer. And what do I mean by wordplay? I mean literally playing around with some words in some way. And we will see how that works as we go along. Now, there are a lot of conventions around crossword clues. A lot of them you find, find out by practice. But the basic idea of these conventions, let me just... Um, bring them up here, sorry. I think there are really only two significant conventions. We'll get on to tips later. Uh, the two conventions that I think matter, that I think define cryptic clues if they're done properly, are these. <clears throat> Definitions of words, phrases, or abbreviations, and I don't just mean answers, but anything that appears in the clue, will be in dictionaries. Now that's a very vague way of putting this. Quite a lot of cryptic crossword setters use Chambers Dictionary. It's somehow become the traditional British and indeed in some other territories, the standard dictionary for crosswords, partly because it has extensive uh, vocabulary that's useful and partly because, I don't know, it's, it's just become the standard. And I think it's embraced that to some extent and, and set itself as the crossword standard. Uh, but some setters will use other dictionaries. What the point of this convention is, in British cryptics at least, you do not get phrases that are too new for the dictionary. That is very rare. And that's why, to some extent, an American crossword solver will find a British crossword a bit stuffy. It won't be using modern slang that hasn't got into the dictionary yet. It won't be using phrases that although they may be in vogue at the moment, may die out. Um, and that's quite important. Also, this limits the amount of abbreviations that can be used. When you first look at cryptic clues and their answers, you see an awful lot of abbreviations and you go, 
Well, I didn't know that could stand for that. And there are, and it seems a very unlimited universe of what the crossword compiler could use. But in fact, it is a bit limited by what abbreviations would be in dictionaries. Also, this convention means that you can't define a word in the way you use it, if that's not the standard way that is accepted by dictionaries. So it's quite a loose convention. It doesn't really change things much, but I think it matters. And it certainly matters in terms of constructing crosswords. Now, the second correct convention is a little harder to explain still. The clue, if read correctly, should precisely specify the answer. Um, the wordplay parts of clues will sometimes just list wordplay elements that if you put them together they work. If, however, one needs to be contained within another, if one needs to be um, reordered, the clue has to say that. Sometimes clues will just give the wordplay parts, sometimes they will give an imperative verb to tell you to put something in something else or to reorder something. Sometimes they will describe from the point of view of the answer how it came to be assembled. But in some way, and if you read the clue with the meanings that the words are meant to have in it, it should specify that answer. Um, so I'm also going to go on to the first tip I've got, because I think this matters a lot before we start solving, and we'll come on to the other tips later. So this tip is very important. Some apparent words in the clues are only there to provide letters in the answer. And this is sometimes called a, a use mention distinction. So if there is an anagram part of the clue, the word used to provide the letters in the anagram so let's think of a very straightforward example. Um, I don't want to use dog and god because that's a reversal as well as an anagram. But let's say cat. If you had a clue that said crazy cat in it, and the answer to the clue was going to be act, which is an anagram of cat. The word cat is there not being used for what it means in any way. It's just being used to provide the letters. And that happens to most clues. Probably most clues have a word or more than one word in it that you're not reading. You could put it in capitals because it's not the word cat that you care about and what it means. It's the letters C-A-T. So with this information in mind, let's call up the puzzle and have a look at it. I'll come back to some other tips as we go. But here we go. This is, I've never seen this before. This is the Times... Um, Quick Cryptic 2000. So let's have a look at the first clue that comes up. Scoundrel keeping Oscar behold in the shade. Um, and, okay, it's a slightly complicated one in a way. There are three parts of the wordplay. And they are the, the one word here no, in fact, there are no words that are just providing letters. These are all definitions in a way. So Oscar is in the International Phonetic Alphabet. If you're saying, if you're spelling out um, how to spell the word God, you might say Golf Oscar Delta. And Oscar there means the letter O. And in this clue, it means the letter O. Behold is an interesting um, crossword ease world. There is an old word for behold, which is low, as in lo and behold. Lo means look at that. So L-O is what behold means here. And the scoundrel in the first word of the clue, again, we're going to translate that. We have three more letters. Look, this clue enumeration of six tells you how many letters are in the answer. So we have O from Oscar, lo from behold. We need three more letters to make this up. And the scoundrel is keeping Oscar Behold in. So what three-letter word for a scoundrel can we think of? Well, one of them that you might be able to think of. It's certainly not the only one. You might have thought of cad, for instance. But in this case, it's cur, as in a mangy dog or a scoundrel. So if you put O low in cur, you get colour in the British spelling, which is a shade. That's the definition. So 
if you have the scoundrel keeping O and low in, and that's Kerr putting it in, and you get the shade. And this brings us straight on to our second tip, which is very important. Oh no, well, the second tip is look for operators saying how certain clue parts act in the wordplay. And here it was keeping in. So scoundrel was keeping Oscar Behold in. Um, but the third tip is very important as well. Look for short synonyms of words in the clue. So as soon as I read that clue and saw Oscar, I thought, well, that can often be O. As soon as I saw Behold, I thought, that's almost always low. I was much less certain about Kerr, but again, I'm looking for a short synonym. So I might have been looking for a short synonym of shade, and I might come up with hue, H-U-E. But if you think of the right ones in this case, you get to the right answer. So that's what we get, colour. So let's, well, we could move on to the next clue, but we get some letters. And actually, one of my tips is, here we go, is use checking letters to guide your thinking. So the first thing I'm now going to do is to move on to checking letters. And those are the letters that we've now got in the grid. So this letter O in one down is providing a check between one down and six across. So it's a checking letter. Uh, we call the other letters in this clue unchecked letters or unches. So one down. From part of empire, perhaps. No one local, sadly. Now, here we're going to be combining a couple of the things that we've considered doing. Um, we're going to be combining translating one word in the clue into something shorter, and that's the word one. That is very often in crossword clues representing the letter I, not so much because it looks like it, but because the Roman numeral for one is an I. Um, and if we translate one to I, then we have no I local, sadly. And if you consider that sadly can mean in a bad way and is often used as an anagram indicator. So we're going to anagram the letters of no I local. And the clue is from part of empire, perhaps, the definition part of the clue. So we're looking for a word that means perhaps from a part of an empire using those letters. And if you're good at anagrams in your head, you may come up with this word, which is colonial. So there we go, that, that's one down. Now let's have a look at two down. It's quite a long one, so we may not get very far with this. I may not know the answer. So, female compatriot of noble line without husband. Um, and I don't know what the answer to that is, I have to say. Oh yes, okay, I've got it now. So the definition is actually the more helpful thing here. Often the wordplay is very helpful, as we found in the first couple of clues. But here the definition um, well, I'm going to tell you it's female compatriot. And there's not very many ways of saying that in 12 letters. It's somebody from the same country as you, and it's a female. And country is seven letters, woman is five, country woman is a word. So that's likely to be the answer, especially with the O we have. Now, how does that work with this clue? Well, of is just a link word. And these do sometimes appear in clues. It's saying that the definition or the answer to this definition, female compatriot, is made up of the next parts of the clue. The noble is a count. That's a definition that's not especially short. It's as long as the definition, in fact. But that is one type of noble. The line, this is an abbreviation and a slightly indirect one, but Again, from crosswords, it becomes familiar. The line is a railway, which is often abbreviated RY in Britain. So that's the next part. The next is without. Now, that can sometimes be an operating word, but in this case, it comes down to, I think, W slash O is used often as an abbreviation for without, and that's what it is here. Husband can be man. You can use the word, the, the phrase, my man to mean my husband, and we put that on the end, and that's how we get country woman made up. So that is two down. Let's get on to the next one. Um, we have three down. Dangerous reptile descending on American plant. Now, here we get quite a long um, sort of link word, descending on. 
we can actually ignore because we have to put a four-letter dangerous reptile on top of a two-letter abbreviation for American. And we will, we will get a plant. Very often when you see plant or fish in a clue, it's going to be the full answer because they're very useful items of vocabulary to fill crossword grids. So here we can assume that the American is US and we have to think of a dangerous reptile, something R, something, something, that's going to allow us to complete a plant. So let's put in US and see if we can think of a plant that has a dangerous reptile on top of US. And well done if you've got crocus. That's what the answer is. So we're going along very well. Now let's use the checking letters we've got across and we'll have a look at nine across. Grain seen reflected in moon rock. And this takes us on to another type of clue. And let's go back to the tips, because after these tips, and I haven't really got any more, I don't think, at this point. Oh, yes, I have a general tip, which is practice, persevere, check solutions, and join forums. These are the ways that you get better over time, rather than tips to go straight into your first puzzle. Practice, obviously. How, how does anybody get better at anything? Persevere. I do believe in not giving up when possible, but when you do give up, check the solutions the next day and try and work out how a clue works. Join forums is an option that really wasn't available when I was beginning, but um, there are lots of internet forums these days which discuss crossword clues from specific puzzles, and uh, I do recommend many of them. They are very helpful. So let's carry on down to the wordplay types. So we said at the start that um, we would come up, there was always wordplay in a clue, and it's not true. There are exceptions. Sometimes the wordplay is not actual wordplay, but a second definition. We haven't come across yet that yet in this puzzle, but it can happen. An anagram, well, we've seen that in the clue to colonial. Reversal, don't think we've had that yet. I'm sure we will at some point in the puzzle. Addition, yeah, we were putting together the elements of country woman. Subtraction, I don't think we've had that yet. Insertion, yes, we put O and LO into cur. So we've already seen many of these types. Deletion, obviously, you can just delete a letter out of something. It's much the same as subtraction, to be honest. Now, we have now come across one of the other two types that I think are worth listing at this point, hidden and homophone. And there are a couple of exceptional types that we haven't seen, but really we've covered the basics now. Now, a hidden clue basically hides the answer in plain sight in the clue. And we'll see that in the clue that we're looking at now. We'll get on to a homophone. Hopefully we'll have one of those somewhere in the puzzle. You don't always get one, but we'll see if we do. Um, and of course, these things can be combined. But here we have something hidden in this clue. And the clue is very specific. It says that the grain that we're looking for is seen reflected in moon rock. So moon rock is only provided for its letters. You don't have to think of a short definition of moon rock in this case. You just have to look at the letters in it. And reflected is telling you that you need to look at them backwards. So what grain is seen reflected, i.e. backwards, in moon rock? Well, let's spell out the letters it backwards. It goes K-C-O-R-N-O-O-M. And using O and N in the grid, clearly C-O-R-N is the necessary part. Corn is a grain, and that is the answer. So we will move on to the next clue. Rotter I ring to return luxury car. And here it's good to think of luxury car is kind of a bit vague. It doesn't seem like the letters are useful. It doesn't seem like an operator. So it's probably the definition. Can we think of a luxury car that's eight letters beginning with C? Well, I can think of a Rolls Royce Corniche but that doesn't really work with the clue. So the other one that I can think of is a Cadillac. And that has the rotter that we ignored at six across, at the cad in it. So he was a scoundrel in six across, and that was Kerr. In 10 across, with an interchangeable definition, it's rotter, and he's a cad. So cad and I are from rotter I. And then it says ring to return. And here's our first reversal. We need to return a word meaning ring. If you ring someone, you call them, and that gives us the elements of Cadillac. So we'll move on to 11 across. 
curtsies afresh serving oranges say well curtsies i mean you might come up with the word bob for curtsy but its letters look very helpful especially given that we have i r and s in the answer according to the grid so let's think about afresh that could be an operator it could suggest that we come up with a new way of using the letters of curtsies curtsies is only there to supply its letters We'll make an anagram of it to serve up oranges, say. Well, that's citruses. I think that's referring to the trees rather than the fruits, but that's fine. Oranges can mean the trees too. And another answer is in. So let's nip on to 15 across. We have an L and a W. They're the only letters we're going to get. Cry of Rook, perhaps, possessing large talon. Well, surely talon and what's in the grid will guide us to the answer claw. How can we make that up out of wordplay using cry of rook, perhaps? Well, that could be core. That's what rooks do. They C-A-W, they core. And that's possessing the letter L, which can mean large. Certainly in, a, in clothes, you could come across that. Interestingly, I don't think Chambers lists that, but all the other dictionaries do, so it's considered fine. Now, four down. Charlie conceals rebukes. Now, what's going on here? Charlie. Let's think back to Oscar in Six Across. Charlie is also in the International Phonetic Alphabet, and it represents the letter C. So the same deal is going on here. You might notice a pattern developing, as I am, of the initial letters of answers. Anyway, in four down, Charlie conceals rebukes. C conceals, or well, the simple definition of that is hides. And if you put C and hides together, you get the word chides, possibly slightly antiquated now, but that means to rebuke or rebukes. Okay, five down. Last part is false, authentic originally. Now, this is a bit more difficult. Um, last part is the definition. We need to think of a specific genre in which a last part is a four-letter word ending in A. And that one in this case is music. False, this is also quite an old definition. There is a three-letter word for false that is going on top of um, the letter A. Why the letter A from authentic originally? Well, if you take the word authentic, which is just here to supply its letters, and you take its origin, if you consider the word authentic, but only originally, only using its origin, you get the letter A. That's what this is saying. We'll often see the word initially in clues, and that's doing the same job, or finally or ultimately take the last letter. Sometimes you'll see essentially for taking the middle letter. But those are really useful um, phrases to get to know because compilers so often need to clue just one letter. And here we're adding A to COD. If you have a a cod story, perhaps. It's likely to be a false story. Um, and that is quite... I, I hadn't heard that till I was at least 20, I would say, ever. But I've heard it now, and I know that a coda is the final part of a musical piece. So it also gives us the C at the beginning of the word that we were kind of beginning to expect. So we can fill that in. Now, seven across. Begins with H, ends with O. Fashionable post office, one found by river, naturally. Well, post office, that is, you can see from the capitals, that's kind of shouting, use my abbreviation, which is PO. Can we get a word for fashionable in three letters beginning with H? Well, either hep or more commonly hip would work. And if you put hip together with PO, you get a hippo, who is one found by a river, naturally, in nature. Naturally here looks like it means, of course, but it means in nature. I think hippopotamus is from the um, Greek for river horse, in fact. Let's have a look at eight down. It begins with a P. It doesn't begin with a C. So we're beginning to see the Cs are going around the outside. And I think the one in Cadillac was just a coincidence, probably. Anyway, eight down says, Coy Bill plays daft, not like these words. Well, that's quite awkward phrasing at the beginning. Coy Bill plays daft. 
Now here it's useful to look at the, the letter count on the enumeration, 12 letters. Um, and daft is a potential anagram indicator. And if you look at the words coy, bill and plays, their, th their lengths are 3, 4 and 5, which adds up to 12. So I think we're looking for an anagram of coy bill plays. They've gone daft, which is another word of saying they've gone crazy, they've messed around, they're, they're out of control. And we need to find a way to put them back into control, if you like. Not like these words. Well, the answer here is polysyllabic, which is quite clever because none of the words in the clue are polysyllabic. They're all one syllable long. Polysyllabic means having more than one syllable. And that doesn't apply to the words in the clue. So it's a clever definition referring to the clue itself. Now I have a quick look at 12 down. It begins with an E. Girl, only feet from the TV. Immobile. Um, and here, well, I mentioned that we could use finally or ultimately to refer to the last letter of a word or two words or three words. Here they've gone a little bit further. Only feet from is the phrase that we have to concentrate. And in this case, that means only use the last bit. The foot is the end part. Only use the last bit of the words the, TV, immobile. And the last letters of those three words are E-V-E, -E, and a girl might be called Eve. So that is the definition. I mean, girl is a very loose definition, if you, in my opinion, for Eve, but it's certainly accurate. Eve is a girl's name. Uh, and there the words the, TV, and immobile are all only in the clue to provide their letters, as we suggested in the tips. So let's have a look at 13 across. Brief, detailed description you gamble on. Well, here we finally got to the double definition clue. There are two definitions of a four-letter word, sort of abbreviation, um, and but it is a word in the dictionary, which, as I said earlier, is one of the conventions. Now, you can have a brief, detailed description, and that's something that you might use in a technical area, um, and it would be a specification shortened to spec. But something else that spec is used to mean is if you gamble, you do something on spec, and in that case it's speculation. But again, the word is spec, spelt S-P-E-C. And again, we're seeing C's in all these letters around the outside of the grid, so feel free to use that from now on to guide your thinking. 16 across will almost certainly end with another C. Let's have a look at it. Um, as copper, for example, call time after disturbance. Well, have a think about this. Where is the definition going to be? Where is the wordplay going to be? We've got an E, an L, and a suspected C in the clue. Count up the letters. Eight letters we need. Well, look at call time. That's got eight letters. It's got an E, an L, and a C in it. It's got two L's, in fact. And there we're looking after disturbance suggests you might have to disturb those letters. So we're looking at another anagram. It's got to mean as copper, for example. And the answer is metallic, which is like copper, for example, or indeed any other metal. So let's have a look at 14 down. Again, probably ending in C. Long poem. I'm immediately thinking of epic. Cut by half causes widespread ill feeling. So the definition seems to be at the end of the clue. Widespread ill feeling or causes widespread ill feeling, although causes could be a link word leading on to what's going on. So we have to cut epic with a half. And one of the um, synonyms for half is demi, as in demijohn or various other forms. And if we put demi into epic, we can get epidemic, which is widespread ill feeling, not in the actual meaning of ill feeling, which means spite or malice, but in the effective meaning of ill feeling. If everybody feels ill, that's because there's an epidemic. 20 across. Boy having beer cold. Well, beer is very often reduced to a three-letter synonym in crosswords, ale. And that works very well here. Ale, 
and then cold can be the letter C, which we're expecting at the end as well. That is in weather forecasts. I think you see cold abbreviated to C. And Alec is a boy's name, just as Eve is a girl's name. Let's have a look at 21 across. Genning up, it regularly leads to boredom. Well, this is a type that we haven't analysed, but here regularly is being very specific about what to do Jenning up is an odd phrase, so perhaps that's only there to provide its letters. And if you regularly dip in and take the letters of jenning up it, we'll take the second, the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, and the tenth letters of that phrase. So we're selecting them regularly, and it gets you E N N U I. And ennui is a word taken from the French, but in English dictionaries meaning boredom. So that's the answer there. Let's have a look at 22 across, remembering it probably ends in a C. Ace detectives in charge becoming sour. Well, here we're back to what we had at the beginning. We're looking for short synonyms. We always are. Ace can be abbreviated to the letter A in a bridge deal or something. Detectives, this is a British abbreviation. The CID is the Criminal Investigation Department, I believe, um, of the police. So. A plus CID in charge can get abbreviated to IC. You'll find all of those abbreviations in our dictionaries. And we get acidic, which can mean sour, both literally and figuratively. 16 down, measuring system encountered, endlessly var valuable. Ah, we'll finally get a deletion. Um, so the measuring system here, you may be able to guess just from the letters, the fact that it ends in C. But encountered translates to its short synonym met. Valuable here means rich. And endlessly means delete the last letter. It's without its end. So we get rick. And metric is a measuring system. 17 down. Sailor with waterproof coat found on road. Sailor has a number of short um, synonyms or abbreviations. They include AB for Able Seaman, that's the abbreviation within the Navy, OS for Ordinary Seaman, uh, but also TAR, um, which is an old word for a sailor. So here we can put in TAR, we've got the T at the beginning, waterproof coat is a MAC, and what's found on the road, TARMAC. That's the answer to that, 19 down probably ends in a C. Oil exporters work with European community. Well, European community, again, you can see the capitals suggesting its abbreviation. Work is a little more elusive. That can mean an opus in music, which is often abbreviated to OP. So if we put that, we get OPEC, which is OPEC. An abbreviation, but sometimes used as a word. I'm not quite sure how it would appear in the dictionaries, but... Uh, that is the oil producing and exporting countries. I believe that's what OPEC stands for. And we've got one more answer to do. We're suspecting it begins with a C. Reduce run for one traveling to work. Well, I'm sure you can see the answer from the letters in the grid. Commute is a word meaning to reduce a sentence or something. If you commute someone's life sentence to 10 years, that means you reduce it. Or you, I think the most familiar use in English history is that um, death sentences were commuted to transportation. Um, but anyway, that gives us commuter who is one traveling to work. Oh, I didn't mention that run can be abbreviated to the letter R. That's from cricket. And there we go. That is the solution to the quick cryptic number 2000. Now we can see all these C's around the outside. I think if we count them up, we will find that there are 20 of them around the outside. And C can be 100 in Roman numerals. If you multiply 100 by 20, you get 2,000, the number of the puzzle. I think I read that Des was the setter of the first times quick cryptic, which must have been... Uh, it comes out, I think, Monday to Friday. So there must have been 400 weeks of the Quick Cryptic. It seems like quite a recent innovation to me, but that's clearly eight years worth of Quick Cryptics. So Des was asked to return, I believe, for the 2000th and compiled this specially, which is nice. And that is our introduction 
two cryptic crosswords. Do remember these, these parts of the tips at least. The rule is that each clue has a definition and some wordplay to confirm the answer. As I said, there are one or two exceptions. We didn't need any of those for this puzzle. You won't for almost any puzzle. The conventions are that the answers particularly and any definitions of them or parts of answers will tend to be in dictionaries. So you can at least limit your thinking to what would be in the dictionary. The clue, if read correctly, should precisely specify the answer. That didn't matter too much today, I don't think. Um, some words in clues are only there to provide letters. That's very important. Look for operators to help you solve the clue because they often lead you to which parts of the clue are doing which job. Look for short synonyms of words in the clue. Use checking letters to guide your thinking. And of course, the normal practice um, and ways of finding out how to find things you didn't know before. Thank you very much for watching our guide to cryptic clues and uh, I hope to be able to recommend this video for months to come. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, there are a number of videos on Patreon that go into more complex crosswords as I say. There's a number of videos in our past that deal with all sorts of crosswords and you can use those to um, see these conventions and tips in action but every cryptic crossword is using these conventions and tips just because the vocabulary gets harder or um, the disguise within the clues gets harder nothing strays outside this and that's a really valuable lesson thanks for watching i hope you have give cryptics a try and hope to see you again soon on the channel bye for now